You want my advice? Yes, please. You're not gonna like it. That's okay. You got married too fast. <laughs> That's not advice. I told you. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. I thought today I would talk about some of the ongoings and a few titles that uh, kind of ended recently that are definitely worth uh, reading. There's not a whole lot of great stuff going out of DC and Marvel, in my opinion, but there are definitely a few titles you definitely need to check out. We're going to concentrate more on indie titles in this video. And here to talk with me about that is uh, Drew from Comics Elite. If you don't know who Comics Elite are, Drew is on the channel for the Comics Fishing Idols a lot. They also... Uh, they do comic book recommendations every Wednesday on the podcast. It's also on their own YouTube channel, Facebook page. And they you basically read every comic book, right, Drew? Basically. And it's anywhere between 20 to 30 plus titles we're reading every single Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> so he's always on top of these things. So Drew should uh, even know a few more titles that maybe I'm not even into. Maybe some things that got better. Maybe some things I never picked up. We'll start out with the big two. We'll we'll hit those first on you know because it's not all that many titles, but there are definitely a few things definitely worth reading. For me, for Marvel Comics, the standout title is Hellions from Zeb Wells and Steven Segovia as the primary artist. There's been a few uh, fill-ins there. Basically, it's like the mutant uh, Suicide Squad, but to me, it's it's even better because the family dynamics, the team dynamics, it's really funny. This is the only series that had good episodes, not only in Ten of Swords but also in the Hellfire Gala. They were kind of filler, but they were fun and they were interesting. I think uh, Hellions and you know, with uh, Mister Sinister, were tying into some of the House of X powers of ten stuff. I just think Hellions has been must read since day one. Yeah, I, I'll I'll agree with you. I started I jumped on the Hellions train a little after the fact, but even so, it, it's been hysterical. You know, just I it just what they're doing with Mister Sinister and his evil twin, just it his clone. I'm sorry, it, it's hysterical. I, I get a kick out of it every time I read it, and it's getting better. You know, this last issue had quite a quite a cliffhanger. I can't wait. Absolutely, that was one of the better issues of Hellions that they've had. Period. Now, there's a few other titles out there that that I think are worth reading. We know that Daredevil is just about to end on issue number 36 from Chip Zdarsky. It's going into the Devil's Reign uh, event, which is going to be a big crossover. Is is that another one of the Marvel titles you'd be recommending? Daredevil? Uh, yes. You know, it's been one of the better ones. It hasn't been great all the this way through. This last issue was the weakest. Yes, it was. the whole run. <laughs> yeah, it's like Sean and I talk. We're like, you know, this is kind of a meh, because really the last two issues could have been put together into this one. And uh, mm -hmm. But he's been, he's had a few speed bumps here and there where he's put in his own commentary, you know, whether about billionaires and such. But yeah. it, on the whole, it's been a solid good run. You cannot go wrong with Daredevil. Yeah, and the Marco Cicchetto art, he's not always the artist on there, but he does yeah. them in story arcs, mm -hmm. and he's been fantastic. Is there another Marvel series out there that really pops in your head that you think people should be reading right now? <sighs> when it comes to Marvel, you know, I, I, I'm guilty of it because I'm, I'm an older fan. I love X-Men Legends. I, I think that's just fun. Mm, it's just absolutely. fun reading. It's just fun. Those reading. are great. They're like two uh, two issue arcs from legendary creators. The Legends themselves are like Chris Claremont, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Larry Hama, who else we get in there? We get a, do you get the Simonsons? Yeah, we got so the Simonsons. Got the, yep, Walt and, Walt and Luis. And uh, then we had Brett Booth on the first arc with uh, Fabian, which yeah. was really good. Yeah, it, and next, coming up, we got Larry Hama coming up, coming yeah. back. So, it, yeah, it's just fun. X-Men Legends is absolutely can't miss. That's, I'm, I'm surprised I forgot that one, but absolutely X-Men Legends has been fantastic. I hope it's an ongoing, and they really uh, keep going with that because it's been fantastic. Now let's get into DC Comics. I'm not a huge fan of everything that's come out of Future State. We're in Infinite Frontier. It feels like we're mostly building towards Future State. I've made a couple of videos with my objections to a lot of what's happening. But there's one series that absolutely stands out in my mind as must read. It's one of the best comics mm -hmm. ongoing right now. It's Robin from Josh Williamson and Gleb Melnikov. Hey, you know, I know I get it. It's Robin in a Mortal Kombat tournament on Lazarus Island. I think it's dope. I didn't like you know, the way that they kind of made certain characters that should be there, not be there with, with some exposition. But other than that, everything has been pretty much pitch perfect. Yeah, that's been a fun series. Uh, and we get the return of Connor Hawk, the long return of Connor Hawk has been on the island. And with this last issue, he was, he had his own little chats with the various members of the Bat family. And had, there's a great heart to heart between him and Dick, which is great. Absolutely. That was and, amazing. Uh, yeah, it, it's been a solid, good run. It just shows, really, Josh Williamson, he knows these characters. And if there's someone who's going to take over Batman, it's this guy. 
Yeah. The other one that, that stands out to me is uh, Catwoman by Ram V. I think he's done amazing things with the character since he took over. You know, we got that anthology in number 25. It feels like he's really built up Alleytown. Unfortunately, it feels like it's going to be stunted by Fear State. And the Alley Town is going to be a big part of that. I don't know that it's all going to be everything that Ram V himself was was planning, but everything up to this point has made it almost must read. It's been really, really good. Absolutely. And he introduced one of the, in my opinion, probably more so than any character Tynan has created, the best Batman villain, you know, Father Valley. I love Father Valley. He is a great new uh, antagonist in the in, in the rogues gallery. So I'm um, hoping we get to see more of this character and more of what Ram V is going to tell from Catwoman. Yeah, that's that one's a good one. Are there any other Marvel titles that really stand out in your mind that people should definitely? Be, or I'm sorry, DC titles that they don't want to miss. Uh, I would and two, in my opinion. Uh, first, I'll go say I'm going to say a Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad has been a, in my opinion, a huge step up from where it's been prior to Fear State. I mean, there's no Harley Quinn, no real Rick Flag, or maybe not. We'll, we'll see what happens. But it's focusing on other characters and a a Superboy. I don't want to know if he, I'm not going to say if he's the real one or not, but it's been solid. It's been fun. Fantastic. The last issue had, had ambush bug in it. It was hysterical. And, uh, I cannot, it's just so much fun. That one's Robbie Williams, correct? Yes. Uh, I got it actually right here. Uh, <laughs> no Thompson. I think it's like uh, think Freddie Thompson is his name. This is, yeah, I guess I got that one wrong. All right. Tom. Whoops. Robbie all that Thompson. one. Is there another title out there that you think from DC that people should definitely? In my opinion, he's not everyone's uh, cup of tea. It's Swamp Thing. To me, Swamp Thing is the DC title right now. Uh, Ram V with Mike Perkins on the art has been lights out. Almost every single issue has been fantastic. And we're getting a new, I mean, granted, it, people people may say they get, they're getting tired of the green and uh, the elders, the elder gods, but it's we're seeing this in, from this time from like an Indian perspective, you know, on an, an actual force there and corporations coming in, deforesting it, and the the current uh, avatar, he more or less works for the company. He let his father, his father and brother die more or less because of the company, and uh, it's a new twist, new spin on things, and it's been fantastic. I enjoy it. I really like the future state two part that they did. I thought that was almost like perfect. It felt like it was of like all like almost Alan Moore level quality. Swamp Thing is one of my favorite characters DC. I thought they went a little too slow in the introduction of Levi as the new Swamp Thing. He almost didn't even get to meet the actual the man behind the the avatar until like yeah. issue five. I wish yeah, they would have sped it up just a little bit. Exactly. And you know what? One thing I've got to give Ram V credit for, he did a great job with the handing over of the mantle from Alec Holland to Levi, which was great, which is usually bungled more or less, but he did a great job with that. And, um, you know, it, 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 this could have been a, this could have been terrible after the, after that, that two issue stand on future state, which was fantastic. One of the best ever, but he's been so incredibly consistently great about with it. I just can't give it enough praise. Absolutely. So there's four DC titles that you should check out that are ongoing. Now let's get to the indie seed. Ooh, Shockingly, man, this is the Wild West. This is the Wild West. When we get to the indie I seed. think Valiant is like at an all-time low, probably worse than their acclaimed days. It is so bad right now. But there's one title that absolutely stands out. I'm normally a pretty vocal uh, detractor of Cullen I, Bunn. I, I think feel I know like what it is. I know what it uh, is. He's kind of a, a boring superhero writer. But his work on Shadow Man, which is like a horror-themed superhero character, <laughs> It's been fantastic, and it's it's written like a real comic book, Drew. Yes, it Each is. Each issue, you have a villain, but you have these <laughs> overarching subplots that are running through it to a bigger villain at the end. And each issue, you know, it's it's him and uh, I can't remember the name of the, the one guy, but they're going through and they're battling all these characters. It's like, wow, this feels like a real comic book that's meant to be read issue by issue each and every single month. The art by John Davis Hunt, I think, has been uh, more than serviceable. <laughs> It's, it's really good, and uh, I just love the series. I'm shocked. Yeah, likewise. You know, I agree, too. And uh, I, cause I've, I've known about Valiant for the longest time. I knew about Shadow Man, but I never got into Shadow Man because I really couldn't understand it. I'm like, so who is this guy exactly? Where are his powers? But Cullen Bunn lays it out for you in er almost every single issue, what he does, his powers, and who he interacts with, what he's trying, who he's trying to defeat. It's like, okay, I get it now. I understand who Shadow Man is. And like you said, the, the art in this, in my opinion, is fantastic. It is a true 
horror superhero comic in the vein of like Swamp Thing. It is fantastic. Yeah, definitely recommend Shadow Man. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else from Valiant that you personally would recommend? Nope, not a single one. Shadow Man so is bad. the only one I can uh, confidently recommend. Yeah, yeah, I can't stomach anything else they're doing. Like, oh, don't even get me started on Exo Band of War. Oh, yeah, it's not, <laughs> not pretty. Not pretty. Yeah. So we'll go over to IDW now. Uh, this is another title. Mm. The delays on TMNT The Last Ronin are very frustrating. It makes uh, Doomsday Clock out? look like it came out on time. <laughs> yeah. You know, it. It's, it's shocking, but Team and T The Last Ronin is absolutely fantastic. When you actually get an, ep, an issue, it's more than worth the money. It feels like you know it was worth your wait. Unfortunately, I wish they were coming out quicker. Obviously, this is Kevin Eastman, mostly written by Tom Waltz, who's been his writing partner for the most part at IDW. We got the Escorza Brothers on art primarily. Eastman is, himself is actually contributing a few pages here and there while they're telling some backstory within Team and T The Last Ronin. But this is one of those titles that's absolutely lived up to the billing. I just wish it came out on time, but is when you get an ep issue, is it's like almost perfect every single time. Yeah, it almost almost is perfect. You know, I, I in my opinion, the last issue was a little bit of a step down. It was it wasn't bad. It felt like kind of paced at this point. I'm like, okay, I'm finally feeling the pacing a little bit. But um, issues one and two were fantastic, perfect, and like you said, the. the the delays on this it is no joke it, it, it's like guys you have to get this out on time you know i, I mean when, well, when there's three if, different sets of artists working on the book i know it's it's extra pages but you would think <laughs> with the, the amount of artists they would have they have yeah. on the book they would be able to maintain it exactly you would think especially with a title you know as with with and not just that but like after the sales were so high for issue one you would think there would be a focus on okay you know we're going to make this our focus. We need to get this out on time and keep the quality up on this. We're not going to keep delaying this several more months. By the time the next issue comes out, people are going to forget that it was still coming out. I guarantee it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's almost like, um, almost feels like maybe IDW's financial woes have contributed to this. Like they maybe they can't afford the paper or something to, for the full printing. Maybe. You know, this. You want to talk about a self inflicted gunshot wound several times? This is it right here. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, but when you get an episode or an issue, it's absolutely fantastic. Is there yeah. anything else from IDW that you think people should be eyeing up or, or reading right now? Absolutely. Uh, the one series uh, I will highly recommend is uh, Transformers King Grimlock by Steve Orlando. Uh, it's been two issues so far, but it is arguably the best illustrated Transformers comic and the most well-written Transformers comic in years. It is fantastic. Uh, I stay away from that one because Orlando's name was on it. And he's one. He's written some of the worst <laughs> comics I've ever read in my life. Uh, you know, just the, this the that one he did for uh, I think it was Image, the one the Heroes and not Heroes in Crisis, whatever the Commanders and Crisis. Yeah, there you Crisis go. Crisis Commander, something like yeah, that. Yeah. It was not the best stuff he's ever written ever. And uh, but when you read this King Grimlock, it's like this is Steve Orlando. Holy crap! This is amazing. Right. I'm yeah, going to put it on my list. Yep. Yeah, good. Good on you. And because. Uh, I mean, I, I, I could miss my brother Kyle to pick it up. He's not a big fan of Transformers and everything, but he saw King Grimlock ripping people to shreds. It's like, yes, this is what I want. Absolutely. There's another title uh, that, that you should definitely check out, the Canto series. They're on the third trade of that one, Canto 3 Lionhearted. Uh, the art by Drew Zucker is absolutely fantastic. David Booher is uh, kind of a rising star in the comic world. And that's definitely another one that's more of a like a fantasy-inspired comic book. Really enjoyed that one. Now let's get over to the to the big publisher in the indie world, Image. The one that I would recommend right now, and I, do, I wasn't on fully on board, board for the first three issues maybe, but I think it was issue number four that it finally I finally got it. And they've really started opening up this Geiger world with Jeff Johns and Gary Frank under the Mad Ghost uh, imprint. We know that they've got a, a couple more titles coming out, an 80-page giant that's coming out to introduce a bunch of characters. I, I didn't know what was going on, but now that I find out that this is going to be like a fully, you know, a realized like comic universe, and we're getting, you know, some some changes in history and everything, and then the the motivation behind the main character, Geiger himself, this like nuclear-powered superhero where he thought he was protecting his family, you realize maybe that's not exactly the case. Uh, it's been really well realized, the relationship he has with the two kids. Uh, 
So I kept reading because I, I love Jeff Johns. I love Gary Frank and they absolutely paid it off in, in my, uh, my patience and my, my loyalty to them was rewarded with a very, very good opening story arc. Yeah. To me, it, like I agree with what you said to me, it wasn't the best start when it kicked off. Like I know Sean, and a few others, they, they loved it from get go, but me, I'm reading. I'm like, this is good. It's not Jeff Johns best. It's good. But I mean, it, it did get better. It really did get better and um, got more colorful in my opinion. And I can't wait for the, this next, uh, the next arc, you know, it should be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything else in images that you think people should be reading right now? Absolutely. Uh, two I will recommend. One just finished up. We're going to be doing a series of one shots is uh, Stray Dogs. But uh, mm, yes, yes. Uh, Tony Fleeks and Trish Forstner. It, 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 in my opinion, the sleeper hit from Image Comics. Uh, they that was amazing. Not, it finished up a few months ago, I think. Yes, it did. And they're still they're still printing off new covers, um, horror movie homage covers for it. And it truly is the hit, of the, in my opinion, the indie hit of the year. Just, I don't think anyone saw this coming at no. all. Image didn't see it coming. It's crazy. You wouldn't think Silence of the Lambs meets Lady and the Tramp would be a thing. <laughs> yeah, you it, turned, it was so good. Yeah, it, it was. And the, uh, Trish's artwork is fantastic in it. And there, I'm a dog guy, and Sean's a dog guy. And there are certain moments in this, like in certain issues, like issues three and four, it's like it's going to pull at your heartstrings when you read this. And yeah, oof, the Dalmatian. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. The problem is, if you have this book, don't put it in, in within reach of your children. They're going to think no. it's a kid's comic because the art is absolutely made to look like that to kind of sucker you in. And then yes. when you figure out, it's like jarring once you figure out what the book's about. I agree. And, you know, it's very much drawn in that. Um, oh, my God, I forgot his name. Uh, Don Bluth animation style. And fun fact, Trish learned under Don Bluth, which is interesting. So um, when the movie does come out, Paramount Animation Studios does have the rights to the film. It's going to be, it should be uh, animated in this art style too. Yeah. So that, that one's absolutely fantastic for an image. Obviously they got a lot of hits going on right now. Yeah. Uh, does that, that's the one that you wanted to talk about? Is there another one? Yeah. The other one I'll, I'll recommend, I'm, I cannot wait for the next issues to come out. It's called Ultra Mega by, um, oh my, I forget what his name is. Crap. I, I've, I have also forgotten his name, but it, that's Dolce Big is crazy. It is because I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of kaiju, you know, that stuff. But this is amazing. The artwork in this is amazing. The, the violence is amazing. The story is amazing. It just the fact that it I love the fact they bring in the realism fact of how, OK, you have this giant man. He's got this huge arm. You cut it off. Where is all that blood going? And you just see these streets, people dying and scabs yes. and stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's crazy. You see people like, carrying around teeth as like walking sticks. This yeah. is fantastic. This is what a comic book should be over the top craziness. The just first issue it. was a good yeah. swerve too. Yeah, it absolutely was. And just, I just love the fact I, I don't, I legitimately do not know what to expect in each issue. In each issue. He is blowing my mind creatively, whether it's with the story or if it's, or if it's with the art. I, he is fantastic. Absolutely. James so Heron, now we're Heron. James Heron is his name. That's it. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to go over to vault comics, which in my opinion, as far as the indie publishers go, I think they're pound for pound the best. When you look at the amount of comics that they put out, the amount that are really good and worth your time, I think they put out the most, you know, for the amount of their publishing line. And I'm going to talk about two of their series. The first one is going to be barbaric. That one just finished up its first three issues. I guess it's going to come back next year. Michael uh, Morici, one of my favorite writers with Nathan Gooden on art. This thing is insane. You know, uh, I get some people <laughs> might not like the the lingo that's being used because it's so modern. And you have yeah. like this fantasy barbarian character. Yes. I, I find agree. it funny. And the axe is such a great character. I love <laughs> it. Yes. No, I agree. When this when the solicitations for this came out, when we saw the covers, Kyle and I did a solicitation video. Uh, we were like, this is going to be huge. I mean, if you're not already on the train for this, you need to get on the train for this. And issue one did not disappoint with the violence at all in the axe, no. how, how hysterical the axe is. But uh, like you said, the, the, it, there are moments like the modern day um, lingo in it and bringing in like, um, what is it? Uh, I think it was Voodoo Economics, I think you brought up. Or uh, just it's like, okay, this kind of took me out a little bit. But issue three, 
was fantastic. Issue three, stayed away from all that stuff. Great story, great cliffhanger. And yeah, I can't recommend Barbaric enough. It is worth every yeah. cent. If you like if you like violence, you're not gonna <laughs> get more violence for your for your dollar than barbaric. That the yeah, whole thing is violent. A, a drunk axe getting drunk off blood. I, I just I love the fact of that. It's hysterical. Yeah, that thing is nuts. Uh, obviously, Vault does mostly horror and kind of sci-fi mm -hmm. fantasy type books. The next one is another horror book I'm gonna recommend. It finished at least the second story arc. I think that it's been 10 issues so far. It's called Resonant from David Andre. Uh, Alejandro Aragon was the original artist finished up by Skylar Partridge. We're also told that there's going to be another story coming in 2022 from this one. It just finished up, I think, uh, three or four weeks ago. But Resonant is nuts. It's almost like uh, what's that really bad Sandy B movie? Sandy Sandra Bullock Bird Box? Oh, Bird Box. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. like that, but good. Oh, it's almost the exact same premise mm -hmm. where you got this uh, family, they're holed up. They want to avoid everybody because when the certain things happens, everyone goes crazy and starts murdering each other. But unfortunately, one of the kids that this, this, this father, he's got a kid, he's very sick and he needs to have his medicine. So his father has to go out on a trick. He has to leave the kids there by himself. The oldest child is like a one legged girl. She has to look out for the home and while he's off and he gets stuck on an island and all this stuff happens. Resident is absolutely nuts. If you like the idea behind Bird Box, but you didn't like the movie, go check out Resident. Resident, I think it's much better. I'll have to check this out. I think that's the one. I, I don't think Sean has ordered that. Um, I haven't read that yet, so I'm, I'm going to have to check that one out myself. Ooh. I think you should. I think you, you'll like it. Is there anything else from, from Vault that kind of comes to mind that you think people should be reading? Uh, I think it's a, uh, there's a vampire series. I forget what the name of it. I think, I forget the name of it. I think it's from Vault. But, um, as far as I know, Barbaric is the one solid book, in my opinion, you cannot go wrong with when it comes to Vault. Uh, let's I think see it's their highest-selling comic ever, actually. It is absolutely their highest-selling comic ever. Yeah. Uh, they also had the plot. Obviously, that one ended uh, not too long mm -hmm. ago, but there's a lot of really good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, are you talking about the last book you'll ever read? No, uh, not that one. Okay. This was this one's a it might, might not be Vault. It's a, there was a vampire book. I forget what the name of it was called, but um, yeah. Never mind. It's all good. It happens. Uh, we miss out on those you, things. When you, when you read been, so many books a week, they just all start merging together. It's just, it's like, was that yeah. Vault? I forget. Was that Bill? Absolutely. No. <laughs> the next, uh, the last publisher I'll get to specifically, and then we'll, we'll cover some other ones, uh, is Mad Cave. This is another series that just finished up, but Nottingham is one of the most insane uh, reimaginings of like Robin Hood you'll ever see, where essentially the Sheriff Nottingham is the good guy. Robin Hood and his merry men are are definitely not the not the good guys at all. They're kind of uh, reminiscent of Guy Fawkes. They got the masks and all that kind of stuff. This is from David Hazan, Shaw, uh, Shane Connery Volk. The art in this thing is really what puts it over the top. I love the story, but the art. Whew. Yes, it, it, you want to talk about a series? I mean, I remember. So Ernie, um, who runs our store, does our live sales on Tuesday nights. He usually gets to jump on all the indie books. He knows he has a, he's got that sixth sense with before it's going to be hot. And he ordered heavy. He orders heavy on all these books, and every one sold out. And uh, I was just like, I don't know. But I started reading it. I'm like, this is probably the best Robin Hood, you know, adaptation twist since I don't know. Like uh, Kevin Costner played Robin Hood, Prince of you Thieves. Know? Yeah, Prince of Thieves. Yeah, since then, and this is fantastic. And the art, it's like almost like Sean Gordon Murphy in a pit, in my opinion. But like I can see that, it, yeah, it's got yeah, the it's, angular motions and all the things. Yes, and yeah. it, it is fantastic. You cannot go wrong with you know Nottingham. It is mind blowing, legitimately. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's, it's on a, a standstill. We are going to get more stories in that one as well. Uh, so those are the kind of the big ones I wanted to talk about. Are there any other indie comics out there from from Mad Cave or any other publishers that you think people need to be reading right now? I would say from uh, I think it's uh, a Blaze. They have uh, the rights to the Chimerian. I think it's pronounced Chimerian. Or it's I always Sumerian. thought it was Sumerian. Sumerian? Okay, Sumerian. Uh, they've so their their titles have been you know, more or less straight up adaptations of the Robert E. Howard Conan stories, mm -hmm. and they are unhinged, in, uh, unrestricted Conan. Everything. It is what you want in a Conan book. Now, what Marvel's given you, it's like you want to read pure Conan. You got to read a Blaze. Like I, I ordered all the hardcovers. They're coming this way, hopefully this week. I cannot get enough of this series. It is fantastic. 
they are faithful adaptations and there's no censorship. You're getting all the blood and all the sex that you could ever want to Conan comic. I can tell you that. Yes. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> Is there anything else that, that people should be keeping their eye out on? Uh, you know, just uh, thinking, just going, going through my memory Rolodex right now of everything out right now. Uh, that's, that's the one, those are the ones right now, in my opinion, I think you really got to keep an eye out for it. I'm sure when we're done here, I'll start thinking of more. It's like, oh, I should have said that, I should have said that, I should have said that. But for right now, those are the ones that really come to mind. So if you're looking for some of the, the nuggets, the gold nuggets in the abyss of some kind of crappy comics coming out, <laughs> there are a lot of really good things. I think we've probably given you upwards of 10 to 15 comics worth checking out. Uh, go read them up. And uh, hopefully we send you on a on a path to some really great comics. Definitely be looking out. They are going to be um, they are going to be there's going to be a new series for They Live, which I think was been one of the best comics to come out the past 24 months. Uh, that was on the free comic book day. So there's going to be more We Live as well. Didn't cover that one because it finished you know so much earlier in the year. But uh, definitely come back for more. And maybe we'll do this quarterly, Drew. We'll talk about the comics people should be reading every two or three months. I dig it. I like that, you know, because, yeah, we're reading stuff uh, every every week and it's great to have an outlet to be able to talk to other people about this stuff. Who's reading? Who's reading them, too. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Drew. Also, we're if people are interested in Comics Elite. You can go to their website. They do online auctions. They do a lot of, uh, you know, specific store variant covers that are, that are really dope. What else are you guys got coming up? So we're going to be going to conventions. We're going to the next two coming up. We're going to be going to Dallas Fan Expo here next week. And then we're going to be going to New York Comic Con uh, next month. Now, what makes these shows cool for us is that typically at a convention, if you haven't been to, been to them, creators will typically take the night off. They're going to go home, relax, get drunk, whatever. But for us, that's when round two starts. You know, we go back to our Airbnbs. We get everything we got signed, collected, you know, the, all the exclusives. We set up for a live sale that night. So please tune in, guys, for our live sales during these conventions. We go live typically between 7 to 8.30 at night and from the conventions, Easter Standard Time, to show off everything we got signed, uh, everything that's rare, uh, exclusive to the show, and you guys can buy it from us on Facebook, Comics League Comics on Facebook, and check us out when we go live from the shows. And there's definitely a, a link to that. In the video description and it, uh, the website, the Facebook page, and the YouTube channel, if you want to get a hold of the guys at Comic Sleep. Drew, thank you so much for coming on here to talk about some comic books we should all be reading right now. Thank you, Wes. Pleasure as usual being on here. And uh, yes, read more comics, guys, please.